We left Titan Company after they had um, successfully defeated the smoke, or the, uh, yeah, it was smoke. The, the smoke elementals, the, they were like a mixture of like smoke and ash, and it's almost like a smog elemental. The characters defeated them in combat, and it was obvious that they had been summoned by someone else, possibly a Red Wizard of Thay, using them as some sort of tactic. And anyone who knows the Red Wizard of Thay, especially Ify knows that that will not be the last time they try, and they will only get better at it. So knowing now that you're under the watchful eye of the Red Wizard of Thay, all travel is a little more dangerous. Because of this, Lucinda, leader of Titan Company, decided that we're no longer going to travel on the roads. And had taken the party off into the woods, the, the, light, the light woods. The party had traveled some ways before resting, finding a small grove. Not like a grove of a drive, but just a little clearing around some trees. The party had gathered their wits, relearned their spells, prayed for their spells, and got to know each other a little better before leaving. Once leaving, the druid in the party made the area so overgrown that if anything's going to follow you, it's going to have to make a wide berth around this area. So now there's a beautiful grove that is no longer approachable by any humanoid because it's covered in, you know, 5,000 square feet of blackberries. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so the party had left the small grove and the druid had encased it in vines, making it impenetrable. Titan companies still knew each other, but they found that they work fairly well together. At this point, it's going to take roughly 18 days, based on your best judgments, to reach the town of Talstrand. On the way, you will pass by Baldur's Gate, the Cloak Wood, and Baragos. Those may offer some reprieve, depending on what you need, but those are some ways out. You have at least a 10 day of just open road. No, I take that back. Not open road. You have at least a 10 day of the wilds, fields, and trees, because Lucinda refuses to use roads at this point. So we're actually going slower now because we're cutting well, through the forest. I shouldn't say slower. necessarily because it, well, my thought was that some of us are really good at tracking. Like, it's true. With you know. the Druid, it's probably like 20 days. It'll add a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Just to some people even if it's, time. yeah, even if it's only like 15%, yeah. right. it is going to add some more time to, okay. to the travel. Tora would try to get her to use roads and be like, you know, if it's the Red Wizards of Thay, they're going to scry us no matter where we are. If so it doesn't matter if we're on the road or in the uh, woods. Ify not, would back her up too. But in, but as the wizard, actually you have a lot of judgment. Like if that's your opinion, this. No, that's what I would tell her. I would let her know that if they're scrying our location, then, I mean, whether we're in the forest or on the roads, I guess the forest gives us a little more cover, but they're going to find us. It's day three when this conversation happens. It is a cold, cold morning. The, the cold the... air is like <laughs> lightning bolts coursing through the air. Everyone's nose who doesn't have like a super high constitution, their body's just kind of immune to the weather. Or if they cast a spell, if you'd like to waste a spell to do that, uh, their noses are red, any facial hair, like icicles are starting. I mean, it's, it is cold. It has to be like zero. It is just that cold. That's when this conversation happens. Because Tora is standing next to a fallen tree in the middle of the woods, and you are dumping the contents of your boot out onto the ground after last night's rest. Somehow, even with your finely tailored shoes, you've picked up rocks, debris, and twigs, and a nice tick that has attached itself to your left ankle. Mm. How dare the insect druid let this happen? <laughs> so, Fledge, if you don't come get it, I'm just going to kill it. <laughs> oh, oh, of course. Actually, he was probably already heading over there. You're right. <laughs> Especially because he has something to remark on. As she like breaks out in goosebumps all over her body as Fledge approaches crawling. Oh no, the, the crawling. tick is attached. Oh yeah, no. That's why I said he has to come get it, or I'm just gonna like lightning bolt myself, That's or uh, not lightning bolt, <laughs> lightning bug myself to get it off. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna okay. kill myself here. <laughs> you can feel the wind pouring through these loose trees, these like birch trees, like blades, and you'll feel it kind of swing through and it's coming in like almost rhythmic gusts it's not but it's almost rhythmic rhythmic gusts so fledge is walking over to pull this tick off a super engorged gray tick from her ankle and you had just finished saying what you just said before right, right. lucinda is messing with her uh, clockwork arm because it seems to struggle in the cold it seems to get tight and she's actually oiling it the small and it's making that dump, dump, dump noise that oiling noise she has a little oil canister and she's like messing with it and you can tell that she doesn't really know what she's doing with it and she's kind of just like <laughs> it's just 
just like oiling it, um, kind of looking at it because her engineering ability is zero. So I'm gonna step in there and give her a little assistance. Okay. Uh, boss, you gotta, gotta oil the joints. You see the frustration on her face? And she just hands it to you. She, she puts her arm out and hands you the oil canister. Turns to Torah and says, you may be right. They probably can scry us. But the woods will offer protection from area blast spells and things of that nature. Let's and she seems set that that's a really good idea on her part. That like, All right. It doesn't sound egotistical, but she really believes that like, if you guys get attacked, the woods will space you out and they won't be able just to appear and fireball everybody. Yeah, It'll yeah. give us cover. That is a fair point. Fledge uh, pulling up the tick as he's looking between two is, if I may also interject. Yeah, I Tor will... is trying not to look. Yeah, he's like, he's, he's hiding it from her. Um, while we are also in these woods, I can more reliably use nature to our aid. Mother Toral can protect us much more easily in here. Lucinda we'll nods, but Tora, don't ever stop doing that. Just of course. I value your opinion. Thank you. She gives like a nod. That nod tells you a lot. It tells you, I'm still learning how to be a leader. Mm -hmm. But she's definitely trying her best. Yeah. Yes? That's you even thought. <laughs> I, I cast... Uh, resist fire on her and heat metal. <laughs> okay. Well, that way she's not <laughs> stiff in the cold. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, <laughs> just for RP effect, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I get it. I get it. Well, that, and also, your character's known for using spells like a Gatling gun, so. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just... And those are, one, those are ones I have for free? Yes. So, the, 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 the ripped gnome with human-sized hands. Um... <laughs> He's, he's oiling her arm, and then he just stops, puts his hand out, and you see, like, a sheen of, like, divine energy wash over her body. At first, she doesn't notice. And then she's like, what? And she, like, looks down. And then all of a sudden, the rods begin to kind of, like, not super hot, and, like, the frost embedded in, like, the cold and the little bit of moisture that's in, like, it starts to steam up as she's, like, rolling it. She looks back at you. We're going to make you a better arm. Lucinda goes, thanks, Sybil. Although I don't know if that's a good use of spells, but who am I to judge what you use your spells on? She doesn't know anything of divine magic from the DM's point of view. She don't know. Mm -hmm. So yes. with that, also, she, regardless of what you're about to say. Oh, no, I was just going to use weather tell to make sure that we don't have any crazy weather okay. coming. Okay, cool. She just kind of puts the knife hand forward saying, let's go. Yeah. And the party begins to move forward. Casting the weather tell spell. You see, anyone who happens to be looking at Tori, you see her eyes kind of like roll back in her head, showing the whites of her eyes, as she begins to use kind of like the air around her to tell her what the weather's gonna be. Almost if like a weather device would be collecting like the moisture and the wind speeds, all these magical calculations. She's not like actually seeing in a calculation, but the, the magic is being fed into her and it tells her. Um, it's, a... it's going to stay very cold. It's gonna get colder at night. Of course. It's probably not going to rain. You're probably going to get some low frost fog. Okay. Um, is that natural for this time of year in this particular place? Yes. Okay. Just yep. making sure it didn't yeah. feel unnatural. No. no. Good thought. It is very, very natural for this. Yes. Time. And also that when we made camp the night before, I would have written and sent a letter to Edgar. Okay. And then if any time Lucinda asks me to send reports, I would do that too. What is what is this letter? Give me the overview of this letter. Uh, just basically like a, a short breakdown of our um, battle that we had, our first fight. Okay. And just basically letting him know that we're still traveling and that I'm fine. Okay. Basically uh, like a, hey, how are you? This hey, is how I we're you, doing. I love you letter? Yeah. Does it involve the fact that you all have died? I mentioned that I get hurt, but I don't say how bad. <laughs> right. I just let him know that I'm good now. Okay. If it for Ash, you would have died. I don't would, I would have. But I'm not going to worry him like that. There's no point. That. There's nothing he can do about it. Right. Okay. So why unnecessarily worry him? No, that would just hurt his performance. So. Correct. Right. I'm could, not going to do that to him. Good call. Okay. The travel continues on for some time through the woods. Now, you can see the road. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're using to guide you. Not that you couldn't. You have druids. But every less task that someone in a traveling party has to do gives them the option to do something else. You're not going to see any foot, pa any, any foot travel or wagon travel on this road. Probably. It's becoming winter. Towns buckle down. Mm -hmm. People live off of gathered supplies. They're not, they're not on the road, right? No, but they're not. Gonna, they're seeing the road. Like they're traveling by looking at the road. They're in the edge of the forest, watching the road. So, 
if you do see someone, they're probably going to be an adventurer. It's going to be a military movement, which is even still going to be rare during the winter. Or something else to that effect. Mm -hmm. Jay, roll the 20, please. Armies don't march in the winter. Like the first battle of the army. I got a five. A five. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You stop for a midday. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. You stop midday. The sun sits if high in the middle of the sky. Take a picture of that and give it back yeah. because it's the only list I have. <laughs> the party Actually, stops to replenish, eat a little bit of food, drink some water, rest your feet. Any of you don't have like magical shoes, your feet are soaked. I do. You do. I have magical sandals. <laughs> so, so your feet are dry. <laughs> but they're cold. They're cold. They're sandals. Oh wait, they're sandals. They're still wet. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 no, nice try. So you've got exposed toes and the freezing ass cold. Almost got you. But these sandals are too good. She's so, wearing socks. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Okay, you're out of the party. You can't wear socks. <laughs> you can't wear socks and sandals, man. You're uh, you're you basically can't. just taking a short break. Lucinda is fond of moving, stopping, readjusting, regathering herself, moving once again. She's definitely not the hardcore meal team driver that some of the people in the, the gauntlet are. I mean, that be. She believes that people are not robots, and they do need to exist. Right. <laughs> that was a slight dig. <laughs> She's still a little upset about the past happenstance. Damn, Cadis. <laughs> Not really. Um, if only she'd let Sybil resize that gauntlet for her. <laughs> she was not letting it out of her pouch. She's keeping very close to her for no reason. He's yes, Drew. Uh, out of character question, since he probably would have already talked to this. Uh, Fledge, if it's okay with um, her, is going to probably do, since Gabby can lead the actual party from the front, he can do like the thief role, where he's constantly like doing the area around them, like peripheral warning system. Because he can hide and move silently and like be an insect if he has to. Okay, I figured like, I was taking leave. That's because... just so we're how like our party's going through here. Okay. Yes, that would be obviously allowed and appreciated. Um, what form do you take? Uh, while I'm doing that, um, it varies, but probably usually. Four hundred pound category. He's just turns like a giant mosquito. Like, well, uh, probably a wasp actually. Oh, are you like? Okay, your wisdom's very high. Yeah. No. No. The wasp right. will stick out. No, it'll make a loud noise. That's why I was thinking spider. Because I can climb at like 100%. There you go. Yeah. Okay. That's so, what I was before. Giant yeah, giant. good idea. 100 experience points. I like it. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, and my hand moves silently if you want them are both 80. 80? Okay. I can roll them for you. Thank you. Uh, anyone listen to this? We just make the DM roll this because he's not going to know if it fails. Right? I'm not going to know. <laughs> you believe that you're being as stealthy as possible. Good start. I mean, I don't know how loud a tiny spider would be yeah. crawling across the snow. Are you noticing? Well, he no, would warn them. Yeah, but yeah, he'd be up in the trees, basically. Right. Walking down the road is a figure. Like I said, that's rare. This is a tall figure. Stop the party. Okay. Gabby stops. Puts up the universal hand sign for stop. Lucinda stops. Hand goes to sword. Does not draw sword. Thumb pushes down on scabbard, popping the sword slightly out of its scabbard. Point. This person walking down the road is very tall, and they stand out across the... It's not snow, but it's frost. So it's that, like, off-white. Everything's tinged in, in, in white. Against the blue background of the, the crystal blue sky, and the bla what well, would be a blazing sun if it wasn't the dead of winter. <laughs> this man in red, a lot of red, oh. is walking down the road. And you can see him walking with his staff. Atop his head is a large, wide-brimmed, red hat that goes on for ages it seems. Do I feel any weirdness in the magic? Like we did the first time when they opened that rift and attacked us? Um, no. No? You do not. Adorning his shoulders is some sort of like mantle but it looks like, like cheetah or leopard print mantle across his and his beard is magnificent. Like, it's silver and white and almost goes to the ground. Maybe it does touch the ground. As he slowly walks and looks right at the party or hiding in the trees and holds his hand up. You are not hidden from whoever this is. They have spotted you. They break off from the road and begin to walk across the field towards you. As this person gets to the edge of the road, they actually pull their robes up slightly to step off into the grass and then keep walking. 
Ithia moves up closer, way closer to the front of the party and has her giant axe, like, at the most ready. <laughs> okay. Lus- okay Lucinda will walk up next to you, puts her hand out, and she puts her hand on your shoulder. And she says, lower it slightly. She would. You see that she has taken her hand off her sword. Her uh, countenance has changed. She does no longer look upset. She seems to know who this is. Does he have a cheetah print cloak? I'll come As I described, he's got a mantle oh, that, that looks that. like leopard or cheetah print across him. I know who this is. She goes, we're not, we're not in danger. Fledge knows, oh, wait. Fledge knows like, precisely Fledge. who this is. Roll an intelligence check plus 20. Can Tora yeah. make an intelligence <laughs> check? I mean, oh, he's yeah. kind of a famous yeah. wizard. As you're looking, you're like, wait a minute. No, you don't have to roll for this, Tora. Okay. Could it be? Could that be one of one of not the most powerful wizards to ever ro- walk this planet? The Elementster? Is That's... this the Elementster, like, walking towards us? He looks like the Elementster. Either that or this is someone who used Alter Self to pretend to be the Elementster, which is dangerous. Wait, but Lucinda <laughs> said we're not in danger, right? That's so I right. asked her, I'm like, is, he the, is this the Elementster? She goes, or someone pretending to be him. I've only met him once. But she... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely what he wears during the winter. Yeah, he's like... What? <laughs> That's nice. Why does he look like a dork? Corm- yeah. Cormac is- folds his arms and he goes, is he some sort of big shot? Yeah, he is probably says? the most powerful wizard on this plane. Oh. Okay then. You I will show him due respect. Cormac says. <laughs> ah, oh, magics. Wizards. Cormac, you don't know if he doesn't have spatial awareness, but he's actually like three inches behind you. And you didn't know he was there until he went, I will show him due respect then. <laughs> Gabby's eyes get large saucers. And she's watching. <laughs> the man says, as he walks across the field, I don't mean you any harm, travelers. Please, stay a while and listen. He says as he puts Why his hand up. Why did he do this? <laughs> uh, shall we make him? Listen to shakes her head. She goes, I don't think this will take very long. Okay. Uh, I don't know how she knows that, but she just says this won't take very long. Nick, mm-hmm. your character is the fanboy of all the heroes yes. of this world. No, there was a spider-like squeeing noise, and then they came <laughs> the down the tree and transformed back into a human. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'm not sure who's more excited right now, Fletch or Tora. <laughs> like, you she's practically the was bouncing. This tall. He's very tall. Yeah, uh, he's like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and he's built for a wizard. Dude's got broad shoulders. Oh, so God. much taller than I thought. Like, always yeah. seems so like tiny compared to everything else. <laughs> like I'm not human. I'm not. Well, a lot of adventurers tend to be like large humans. I'm and... not, but Gabby's not. Something begins to change, Cora. Eevee, something's changing. You don't feel more magic. You feel less magic. I don't like that. Eevee, um. You feel like a deadening of magic. Uh, he kind of mentions quietly, not wanting to ruin yeah. the mood, but she says, I would look out. This could still be that red wizard of Thay that was after us. They're shit shaking little demons. <laughs> yeah. Lucinda still has her hand on your shoulder. I whispered to Lucinda that, the, that the, uh, the, there's a, like a deadening of the magic, that I'm losing access to my, my magical abilities. Almost like he can hear your freaking words from this distance. The old man says, Oh, don't worry about that. That's my doing, he says as he walks up. Why? I wouldn't want anyone spying on us. <laughs> it's exactly what he says. Fair, okay. He goes, you'd be surprised how many of my enemies will find where I'm at. Can you hand me the one? Goes, Appear before me and try to annihilate me and everyone around me at the same time. Yes, I'd hate to have that happen to you. Just like what happened in Chapter 9 when he was adventuring in hell. Also, he goes, I don't really know you. <laughs> I'd hate to have you attempt to use your spells against me. Although I don't think that would be it. He's like looking at you. No. Ah. I mean, not unless you tried to hurt me first. Don't worry. I don't think that I would happen. I still have full access to all of my magical capabilities. You just do not. Oh. Don't worry, I'm a badass. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Says, so... Goblet. It's across all of you. Here he is standing, like in the frost in the field, right? Kind of have a, a, there's almost this like barrier between you guys and him and like the trees and like you can see yourselves in the forest and he's standing outside of it, just kind of looking all of you. I, I kind of like look at some like, are we gonna go 
talk to she's him. She's make like, him come uh, to us. Uh, I start walking. I, yeah. She's she, starts marching. Lucinda follows Sybil's <laughs> lead. <laughs> I am Lucinda of, of the Gauntlet, and she quickly like and you know mentions whoever it is. This is Tora, and this is Ify, and this is Gabe. Gabe. I I offer to like shake his hand. I'm like I'm Tora Darkdraft. Oh. Nice to meet you. He uh, shakes your hand and he says, "Yes, I know who you all are." Oh, no, really? <laughs> he goes, "You oh, don't you? get to be who I am without knowing things." Well, of course, sir. I know that. <laughs> what brings you to us? Well, I have made it a goal of mine to not intercede in the affairs of man. There are certain rules that apply. Mm-hmm. Should you one day, Torah? Become so powerful as a spellcaster that you would crack the very continent beneath you. You too will have to abide by her rules. And he looks up for the sky. Yes. Magic is all giving, and it also can be shackles. But with what is going on now in the realms, I have been allowed off my leash, as it were. (laughs) Now I cannot give you complete aid. I can't be running around using my gifted abilities to fall demi powers, gods, and their proxies. That does not mean I cannot give you aid. I can give you aid, just not directly. Here, Tora, take this whistle. Hmm. Do not blow it yet. It, of course. I was gonna say, what does it do? We will get to that. All right. This meeting will be quick. Even my magic cannot stop every divination. At the instant that I make myself known, people will be hunting me down. I do have some information to give you. There are many forces at work against you, but these forces are so powerful that even even I, the Elminster, have not been able to completely divine who they are. That should be frightening in of itself. I do not say this to cause you distress or make you afraid. Keep yourself on your toes. Be guarded. Keep your healthy amount of paranoia. It's like he could hear everything you were saying, because he could. Uh, you're sure some sort of Claire audience was cast yeah. as soon as he could appear. Yeah. But don't be so paranoid that you make enemies of friends. You will need every friend you can get. Looks over at Cormac, goes, my, you're, you're bigger than I was told. Cormac goes, thank you. The Elminster continues on. Feel emboldened, and know that to the extent of my abilities, I will be helping you from the shadows. I and not you perhaps you. you. Sorry. I thought you said you don't interfere in man's affairs. Yes. yes, usually I do not, but like I said, in these kind of happenings, when something is trying to resurrect dead gods and throw this world into some sort of next step time of troubles, I have been allowed a little slack on my proverbial leash. And he smiles at that. <laughs> at this point, the Elvester breaks out a pipe. And this pipe, you don't know why it has to be so long. But it's like four feet long, you swear. It's not really, but it's a super long pipe. He begins to puff on it. And the air is filled with a calming, very nice cherry wood flavor. And even if you don't like the smell of pipe smoke, you do right now. Because <laughs> that's its magical effect. At a game, have you ever smelled the cherry from a pipe yes. before? smells so good. It really does. Yeah. He says, now, I must be off. I don't want my stragglers to become your enemies. Oh. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. And it seems like he's hearing somebody. I must be off. Be bold, Gauntlet. Be brave. Move forward. What does the whistle do? do? Oh, yes. <laughs> and he, he keeps, he starts walking again. He goes, I follow him. As soon as, uh, no, yours to stay with them. He goes, when I have left, blow the whistle. A good friend of mine will be summoned to this area. Okay. I have told him to help you. Okay. He is a little off putting. Okay. A little strange. Aren't we all? But he is an ally. Okay. Okay. I have stayed here too long. And he goes like this with his wrist. And there's a weird round glass disc on his wrist, bound with a leather. And there's like little black lines on it. He goes, yes, I've been here far too long. 
Spellcraft. <laughs> I mean, it's. I got. You passed. I, I passed. Basically. Okay, uh, it's not magical. <laughs> you can see intelligence too. That check? under the glass, there's all these cogs and wheels like clicking, and you swear for a moment you hear it from his wrist. He looks at you. Yes, I've been here far too long. I've been here exactly eighteen seconds too long. I must go. Okay. Thank you so much. He looks at you. He goes, "Oh, this." He goes, yes. a "Gift." He goes, "From a friend." He goes, "Think of it like a town's water clock on my wrist." Wow. <laughs> so Ow. cool. I need to make. One. Now he's been here thirty seconds too long. And he, once again, <laughs> that, and you see him. He goes, and he casts some spell. And all of a sudden, you watch this six foot six wizard start to walk away. But he's not walking because he just cast haste on himself. He's like striding away. It's, it's almost cartoony, like the speed that he's going. And he goes, "Be safe! Remember, a lot rests on your shoulders. You must succeed." As he like, as, as he like, vroom, away. He's, all right. He's so uh, cool. Once he's and all of a sudden, the sight. magic goes. Then you feel someone just took the plunger of magic and just stuck it back in your body and just forced all the magic back into you. Ooh. He's so cool, right? Yes. You know, I can't was, believe I shook his hand. Oh, Anyways, I, I blow the whistle. <laughs> Lucinda goes, well, let, and then she turns, Tora in this like nerd girl fandom <laughs> kind of like fit, just blows the whistle. <laughs> and Lucinda's like, what? <clears throat> and you see her kind of, oh, Tora so goes, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much taller Tora than has an inkling of who's about to show up. Okay. You have horrible fashion sense. You blow the whistle and don't hear a sound. Okay. You don't hear a sound. Any character who's not human, who's not human, raise your hand. Oh, not human. The gnome is not human. You're not human. You have heightened. You have heightened senses. You hear a high pitched squealing in the back of your skull. I think it's not working, so I blow harder. She blows it again. <laughs> Corbin goes, ow, 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 when he puts his hand. Oh, killer! <laughs> I know what that is. And you stop after the second blow, right? The whistle. It just like oh. dematerializes from your hands in a puff of magic. One time you well, get it out of her hands. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it like blew up. Listen, listen, listen. She goes, ah, oh, she's like holding it in her head. She goes, you ask before you activate any magical device in this party. Do you understand? She seems kind of upset mm. that you just like blew on the whistle and didn't wait for her. To go. <clears throat> Sorry. She shakes her head and is kind of like, don't, don't worry about. It. Just, just next time, and that's all she gets out before you hear. The sound of wagon wheels clacking, like across the grass. You look up, and a single black mule is pulling a huge wagon. The wagon teeters back and forth as it's being pulled through the brush and like the hard ground. It is covered in pans and brooms and rugs and vases and boxes, blankets, and tarps. It's covered in, like, baskets full of chickens, alive and dead, eggs, jugs, ropes, cables. If you can think it, it's on the wagon. The wagon is at least a story and a half tall. And it, the, there's so much gear on this wagon that it pours out the sides like a person who shouldn't be wearing skinny jeans. <laughs> Ropes tie it to this wagon and sitting on top of the, not like where you would normally drive a wagon, sitting up on the gear like the Grinch who stole Christmas, like sitting on the giant bag is a tiny man with a giant bulbous nose poking out from under his large brimmed straw hat. He wears raggedy robes and his little fat toes stick out from under, but he's wearing shoes that have no bottoms. So it's just like the boot and the top, and there's no soles and no bottom of these shoes, so you can see his little toes out all around. Only really dirty pants. And his, his pants only go to his knees, and then they're like torn off. Like some sort of hillbilly would do, just like cutting them off, they like I would do. They used to be beautiful pants. They used though. to be beautiful, yeah, illustrious, beautiful pants. They were elven too, weren't they? Yeah, elven pants. His little pudgy fingers go up and he goes, Hello! Oh, he hi, Gnome! He says, he puts his hands up. Tora recognizes him. <laughs> and he just throws his hands up. I tell Lucinda that this is the gnome, the god of time. Lucinda looks at you like you ate too many mushrooms. <laughs> she just looks at you and she goes, what are you talking about? I'm 100% serious. The wagon's already here. 
It traveled from there to here in the time it took all of you to hear her sentence. You didn't see it move. <laughs> Told you, you. You didn't see it where it went. She's just looking at you like, what? The little this... man on top of it goes, don't listen to her. She's absolutely insane and doesn't know what she's talking about. <sighs> you can't see his eyes. You can't see his face. Just this enormous round beard. Do you have any cookies? You see two eyes appear from inside the beard. Just for a second looking at you. <laughs> and he goes, shh, not now. <laughs> and he like moves his hand and pushes whatever is in his beard back into his beard. Cormac, Cormac just kind of like straightens his back, almost like a cat would do when it's afraid. <laughs> Lucinda goes, um, hello, good sir. I am Lucinda Erst of the Gauntlet. He goes, oh, I know who you all are. I know who all of you are. He gets off, jumps off the wagon and lands, almost disappearing in the grass. That's for sure. And he goes, in fact, I know all your deepest fears. So are your kinsmen. And your deepest hopes and joys. And the color of your first pet. And how you cut off that extra toe you were born with, opposed to Sybil. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> looks at Cormac and says, and what you did to that pumpkin? Oh. Cormac's like, what? And he goes, ah, that wasn't a joke, gotcha. It was actually a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> the gnome says, my tall friend with a really stupid cloak <laughs> told me to come help you. What a door. <laughs> he goes, his, his, his name's like the the, the palm treeist or the elm elm tree elm elm El, boy. Elminster? Furman! <laughs> no, El, Elminster. What a ridiculous name. He doesn't have a cool name like me. <laughs> doesn't even have a name. Looks back at the party. You can't even see his eyes. And he goes, no one's going to ask my name? You're the gnome. What is your name? <laughs> No fucking clue. And he goes back. <laughs> and he walks back over to the garage and he's like, I wish I knew. He goes, I'm sure there's a version of me that knows, but this one does not. <laughs> so, I am here bearing presents. Presents? Yes. You may call me Man of the Claws. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't get that reference. My apologies. Call me universe. The small diminutive no man says, Adventurers, huh? I have to save the world again. He goes, oh, we've been here many times, haven't we? Oh, wait, you don't know that yet. Hmm. But you're much taller than you. You know that, right? What? He makes it simple. In the world? You're much taller than you. Than myself? Yes. I like this version more. Look at those big, beautiful man hands. <laughs> Can I touch them? And the strangest thing happens when one gnome walks to the ones and they like touch fingertips for just a second. He's like, oh, for that you get this. And he pulls out the chocolate chip cookie. And he pulls it from his pants. You know, I've been, you know, I've been famished. Without I've eating. Eaten worse. Well, Cinda looks at you like you are drunk or some sort of high. She's like, what the, like almost disgust. Karma goes, did he just pull that from his crotch? He says. He did, but they're very the energizing. Mic. You gain plus one per minute. If you... I actually say that in response to Cormac. He says, did he just pull up from his crotch? I, I say, yes, but they're very energizing. Cormac just puts his hands on his head, turns around, and starts to walk away from this happening. <laughs> the giant half orc doesn't want to hear any of this. This is getting too much for him. It's a very unsettling answer for a... <laughs> So, back from my origin, I've eaten a lot worse. Brave heroes off to save the day, and they need the help of I. Well, what do you need? A barrel of infinite fish? Wouldn't be on a rope that doesn't know it's rope. A bridge that you can't walk across. Mm. How about, how about a salmon dinner? Yeah. Like he bruises a salmon. Hand it to you. Thank you. <laughs> I apologize. And all he stops and he goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry." He goes, "You'll have to, you'll have to forgive me. I'm quite mad, you see." And I often forget who I am and what I'm doing, but, but always in good nature. You must be them, the god members, yes? Yes. Yeah. I've come to aid you. The elements are sent me. I'm here to bring you items you'll need. Yes. Thank you. Very well. Okay, so we shall start this. I have specific things for each of you. Because I've seen them. You need these. You must have them. Only you can have them. Before it stops, before I forget. You must use the ones I give you. Do not trade them. Do not sell them. Keep them. Do you understand? Yes. It's imperative. The timeline will only work if you keep these specific items. 
<coughs> yes? I yes. yes. Good. Okay. Because I do not know how long I have before. I don't know. That is a beautiful fish you have there, <laughs> tiny metal giant hands. <laughs> oh, oh, my no. lord. This is so Who fun. gave that to you? He must have been incredibly gorgeous. <laughs> he was. <laughs> yes. I know, because it was me. <laughs> so, he goes, you don't need the barrel fish, and you don't need the rope that doesn't work, and you don't need the snake that knows nine tales of death. Um, let's see. You need... I mean, that sounds useful. Science! Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, hello. So... <laughs> it's so funny and depressing at the same time. Can he walks over the side of the carriage and pulls the ropes. The carriage just dumps. <laughs> All this stuff dumps out. By this time, Corvus comes back. We're sitting standing there. You can tell that Cinda's trying to keep you guys from like walking up to him. <laughs> She's like, "Let's just see how this goes." She says, "I promise he's safe." Many things are safe, Torm. That doesn't mean I want to go near them. <sighs> Anyways, he's over there messing with the, the the wagon, the carriage, and he's like digging into it. And he says, "So, um, Cormac, Cormac, the." Half orc, half ogre, one fourth iron golem. Like, like, heat I, packs or I don't something think I have any of those warm. but half orc, my diminutive friend. And he goes, Oh, I'm taller than you. <laughs> he just stares at him. Corvus says, I guess you are. Goes, oh, yes, I'm way taller than you. Don't think that because you're taller than me, you're better than me, you giant, happening? attractive man beast. Never tied the measure of women. <laughs> It, it, it sounds like there's like three, four, seven, twenty-two people inside this person's head, and they just kind of speak at random times. <laughs> he goes, for you. He goes, I have this. And he produces a box. He says, this was very hard to get. Okay, not really. It wasn't hard to get. It was easy to get. But don't lose it, because there's only one. And he hands the box to him. Cole takes it, and he opens it. And there's this beautiful, ornate flail. He's seen this flail before. And he looks at it, and you see Cormac, like, hard swallow, and if he could turn a, sh- a, a shade of gray, he can't, he's a gray half orc, but he's like, are you ser- serious? And you see, you hear Cormac's voice for the first time almost falter. And he pulls out this flail. It's the flail of ages. Three-headed flail. This oh, three-headed yes. flail, and he pulls it out, and he, like, looks at it, and he's like, well, yes. He goes, of course we would get that for you. He goes, what you're going to be doing? He goes, be stupid not to. He goes, do you send the man up to fight the dragon? He goes, here, young lad. And he says lad looks at you. He goes, <laughs> take this pointy stick, kill the dragon. All our hopes and dreams away, they're wretched on you. <laughs> Even with that idea, you'll no. probably still die. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I mean, yes. So he's talking to himself like that. And he goes, yes, I mean, you're right. It's like a 67.9 repeating chance that they're all going to die. Flail must have increased his chances by at least 5%. Oh. 5.2%. That's why Where's I never see this voice coming from. <laughs> <laughs> when he's looking and speaking, he's speaking both parts. Oh, it's like... He's just it's... absolutely mad. Oh, that's right. That's right. <sighs> so, you know, uh, don't sell it or anything stupid like that. To pay for like thirty-seven thousand hookers. <laughs> Lifetime supply. <laughs> Good hookers. <laughs> he goes for you. He goes, lad who turns into gross bugs. Gross. He goes, well, some bugs are gross, mm-hmm. not the ones that I put in my cookies. Look at me like that, bug lad. He goes, it's the circle of life. You're a foresty boy. He goes, we have to do. He goes, all things are part of the cycle of nature. Some things eat other things. Bugs would eat us if they can get away with it. Out of character, I'm like, this is a very botched essay on how it works, but I'm not gonna, <laughs> argue, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dare argue with him. <laughs> he produces a helmet. And where he produces it from, like, he just goes, yeah, it's there. Like, it's just like a beard. It looks like a giant praying mantis head. Yeah. It, it's, it's greenish black and has like big mandibles coming off it and actual antennae. It actually looks like a giant praying mantis' head that's been hollowed out. And there's like been antennas. You're stuff. supposed to wear it on your head. And he to you. Oh. Like you didn't know. Don't put it on your feet. I assume. What? He's like examining it like, what sort of species is this? Praying mantis don't have an antenna on their head. <laughs> it's not a praying mantis, it's a helmet. 
It's not actually a real like. Yeah, it's a, it's a helmet. It's That's why he's like <laughs> that was in his own head, but right? Like, it, but he looks like someone was just trying to make like a bug-looking helmet. Because yeah. you would know instantly, it's not any sort of real insect from this world. Yeah, I'm judging them yeah. intensely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I looked at Tora before I like put it on. I just kind of like give him a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, it's okay. He looks at you. He looks at you doing that. And he goes, "You think I would give you cursed items? Ha! Now I will." No, I just. I like checking with my wizard before I do anything. Oh. I thought we were supposed to check That's with the wizard. That's a good wizard. idea. I should do that, shouldn't I? Right. <laughs> oh, I must not be listening. <laughs> what? <laughs> he says the what? He's like, I said I should probably make sure my own items are not cursed before I wear them like a good wizard, right? Curses are insubstantial. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> That's why I can't take these pants off. <laughs> Nor would I want to. Have you felt these? Do you want to feel these pants? Gabby, come feel these pants. <laughs> Gabby, get over here and feel these pants. I like how he knows a lot of things already. <laughs> Don't touch me, get away! <laughs> yes! Oh my god. Um, so, he walks over to Sybil. Yeah. <laughs> and in his hand is a candle snuffer. You know, a little a metal ornate like candle snuffer. Just. It's not a giant sword or flail or anything. He's gonna, he goes, very careful. <laughs> he makes the hands up for a giant explosion. And he goes, I thought you'd like it. You know, burns things, blows shit up. Sorry, we'll we'll get to what these do. Yeah, we're gonna. Oh, wow. I love it. I'm standing next to Sybil, so I take off the gnome hat. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, no! You reach over and you lift the hat, and as you do, another hat is instantaneously there. And he goes, oh, well. <laughs> I was very rude. <laughs> Cormac's, Cormac's just terrified. He's like, I put, it put his hat in her bowl. <laughs> and Sid is like, what, you, what did you touch him for? <laughs> I was wanting to see his eyes. I was curious. He goes, that's the trick, young lass. I don't have it! <laughs> Under him, just skull and flesh. What about in your beard? He goes, what? Oh. He goes, that's a pixie. And he pulls a pixie out. <laughs> The pixies are, he goes, no, no, you don't get away. He puts him back in the room. <laughs> he goes, you're staying there until you've done your duty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said I wanted brains. So, the little pixie's like inside not doing anything, looks terrified. <laughs> <laughs> he produces some boots. These knee-high sailor boots. So they're like, they're like, the, the turned over uh, cuff that goes like halfway down, tight thing on the ankle, are bright purple and have a thick black sole. So much though, if you wear them, you're actually gonna gain two inches of height. They're lift shoes. Like they will lift your <laughs> super ugly, super ugly, <laughs> purple with white laces, just yes. gross. It's pretty rough. It look, it look <laughs> Who's gonna look so stylish? He produces them and then he looks around and he goes. Uh, who, who was I going to, uh, um, oh, you're already wearing magical sandals, so not you, no, no, just, just give it to the half orc with tits, you idiot. <laughs> yes, yes, you there, half orc with tits, <laughs> he looks at Cormac. <laughs> oh, no! And Cormac goes, Excuse me? And he looks down and he's like, uh, I said, uh, Not Pex. No, he's, he's not Pex. He's, he's just saying both these and he goes, Oh, yes, you! And he's like, Uh, th- thank you? And she looks so embarrassed now. <laughs> because she might be embarrassed because he doesn't think she has tits. Like, you don't know why she thinks she's embarrassed. And she slowly takes her non uh, mechanical arm, like, puts it across her chest, <laughs> and just, like, takes the boots. And this kind of, like, looks at the side. Corman looks over and says, uh, like he was going to say something, and he doesn't. I think your tits are nice. <laughs> oh, God. He asks. Yes. He whips out a cloak, woof, out from nowhere. The cloak shimmers and like sheen and looks like it's trying to like move left to right as he's holding onto it. The cloak is bright yellow. Oh, God. Why does all this stuff have to look so gaudy? And it's got Come blue. On. Lightning bolts Wizards on the other side. Oh, no. And these are 
the cliche, I'm in fourth grade, and I drew a lightning bolt lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're embroidered, stitched into the yellow cloak. Why do we need to look so dumb? <laughs> right. And he goes, it's the price you pay for being magical. Look Looking like an idiot comes with the territory. You have well, to understand that. Yes. You wouldn't be I mean, like I've, an idiot unless it was powerful. I've Everyone managed knows. to say it's say fairly normal looking. Not not clown. <laughs> As you grow in power, your ridiculousness goes. You know, it's power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. Who am I giving this to? Magic. Hmm. Well, the wizard makes the most sense. Ah, oh, yes. Here you go. Throws it at you. Oh God! I catch it. <laughs> Wear it with pride. It's even got, yeah, lightning bolts. That's why I was going to give it to you. You know, because of your pew pew lightning. Those are lightning bolts. Or maybe that is idiot. <laughs> I think we did. Well, we are pretty dumb. <laughs> well, put it on. Now. I have to take off my other magical cloak yeah. to put on this one. She puts on the cloak and goes, What, what magic cloak did you have? I had the purple cloak of protection that was plus two. You can't wear that in the ring you have. And the what? You have a plus one ring of protection. Mm, yeah. You can't wear both. Good catch. Oh. DM catch. Cheating. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> well, you, 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 you can wear both, but only one works. Yeah. <laughs> the better of the two. Yeah. yeah. So it means the ring has been doing nothing. Right. Yeah. But, but that's fine. I don't even know you. Good catch. <laughs> oh, oh. That, that's better than a ring of Right. Protection. Okay. So. Right. Yeah, we're someone gonna else, get to this. Else can use your cloak. It's actually only a it's a purple half cloak. Oh. You remember that? Purple half cloak we got? Yeah, this is like a mantle and a half cloak goes down to here. I don't remember, but yeah. I'm here right now. Okay, I can give it to like Gabby or something. Yeah. Everyone needs an item protection. Yeah. Anyways. And he says so he goes, that's you! And all of a sudden Iron Stone goes, phew, phew. That cloak goes nose. Spinning around his head and he goes, and catches it. Uh bless you. You're welcome. Wait. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you see his he, he opens his hand showing this little clear prism ion stone, much like the one the Korok wears. Um, previously undescribed because you weren't in the last one, and I'll describe it for those who may be listening. Korok has a white ion stone that's constantly scrolling around his head. It regenerates his bodily wounds. And so when he lays down, if he doesn't take it off, it goes <laughs> and just bounces off the ground and goes back to the other side. It's quite annoying. But you can just pull iron stones off unless they're cursed. He holds that. So, this goes to... Oh, well, this and the amulet are so similar. We should have the wizards fight to the death. Yes. That is a brilliant idea! Yes. Yes. yes! But just with your fists. No, you're not a wizard. You're a, you're a poser. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shit! That was a good joke I just made. You don't even you cast so magic. magic. You're a god cast magic. Look at his hands. Whichever wizard is pressing, you should just take his hands. That's what's actually frightening is that he is talking at the same time. Bryce and I are not speaking over each other, he is talking at the same time. Mm. Cast some magic. I want to see. I have another item very similar. Not quite as cool though, so I want to impress me. If he kind of looks to Lucinda, pseudo for permission. Lucinda goes, go for it. <laughs> just. Corbin goes, I'm gonna stand back. <laughs> he backs up a few. Oh, I back up too. Does, he, does the gnome have anything in his hand right now? The prison stone. Disarm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. He, he goes, he goes oh! And he goes, are you coming on to me? <laughs> I mean, it looked like yes, you took a step towards me. <laughs> oh, I look down to the snow, and I use metamorphosis liquids to turn it into oil. <laughs> Patch of snow goes, and becomes like black oil, and like, or do you like cooking oil? Which kind of oil? Like above, like torch oil. Okay, so like this black oil appears, and he goes, ah. and she says. I didn't want to use anything more powerful. We might come across something later. <laughs> That's why I just used a level one. He looks at me and he goes, wow. Well, that was certainly a letdown. Uh, <laughs> Here, oil. you. He throws a ring at you. Or an amulet at you. This necklace like flies and hits you. Right? And he goes, wear that. You know, so you don't die. What does it look like? So, it is a 
small, plain gold pendant. If you were ever to think that you were just handed like cheap gold jewelry, not like cheap gold. In this time frame, cheap jewelry is like wooden jewelry. But it's a very simple gold pendant. But you can feel the magic like radiating off of it. And the weirdest thing is the pendant actor, the actual pendant piece of itself, right? Is the head of the pig. Little pig head. Like a little golden pig head. <clears throat> Thank you. You are well. Here, you. Throws the ironstone at you. Oh, God. Tor okay. Tor 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 gets spoiled. No, he oh, throws it at you and he goes, <laughs> 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 But this one goes this way. Like at a 45 degree angle around your head, like the back. So every every second you see it go. Oh, oh, that's annoying. Oh, oh my God. And he goes, <laughs> and he goes, sucks to be you. It's cursed. <laughs> so, anyways. Thanks. Someone, never I mind. Think... He goes, Give me a moment. I have to gather the rest of the supplies. He starts walking back over the carriage. Oh my God. There's digging around back in the carriage. So, did you move out the. Um, you have the little candle snuffer, and it looks. And, and the thing about the candle snuffer is, it's made. It looks like it's made out of like metal and also ivory, and it looks used. It has like the singe marks of being a candle snuffer. You know, like it looks like a spoon, basically, like a little cap. Very much. well made. Yeah, very well made. Ornate. If it wasn't magical, you'd probably sell it for like fifty gold pieces. The diminutive, furry-faced man, who is obviously quite, quite mad. Returns from his cart as people are like looking at the magical items that he's handed them. Lucinda's is already putting on these boots, pulling them all the way up. They're um, quite clashing with her natural skin tone and the rest of the clothes she wears. She doesn't wear like outlandish colors. He goes, "Oh, they look very good on you. You should wear them all the time." He just stares at her for a moment. She kind of just gives him this. Lucinda gives him this look like, "What?" Goes, okay. You! The stuff that comes after you burn a fireplace. <laughs> he looks across the ash. Oh, yeah. I want food. Okay. Reaches into his pocket. He pulls out a small black rectangle. And he goes, this is yours now. And he tosses it to you. To catch it. So you don't get to catch it. You put your hand up and it goes like this. And it's, it's an ion stone, but it's not making a full circle. It's going at 90 degree angles. It goes straight up, parallel to your left ear, across the top of your head, parallel down to the right, back up. Back uh -huh. up. Goes, there you go. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's the soft black rectangle ion stone. It allows you to make saving throws versus uh, level drain at plus one. Which, since you normally don't get any save against level yeah, drain, you now can actually save against level drain. Negative nice. energy attacks. Wow. Okay. Nice. You there, petite one, who hides her feelings. <laughs> and he just stares at you for a good 12 <coughs> seconds. And then says, 12, and walks towards you. Was, was that dramatic effect enough? Do you feel awkward enough yet? We can remove feelings. Simple. We can. Would you like us to? How would you like to not feel sadness anymore? Or love? Or joy? Cold logic would be right. Yes. This is brain. Uh, too bad. That timeline would have been. It would be. Yeah. Have these gauntlets. And as he reaches onto his hand, he pulls gauntlets off. There were no gauntlets on his hand. They materialize as he pulls them off, right? Yeah. There's one. And here's the other one. Put them on. <laughs> I don't like gauntlets. You'll like these ones. I use the word gauntlet, but they're not like big metal heavy gauntlets. They're band braces. They're, they're actually band braces, yeah. They're like basically bracers with a little bit of padding that goes over the top of the hand, straps that go under the bottom. They don't look like any way like super magical. They don't have they a don't giant flying. Get in the way of no. just made a supple leather and light chain them. Right. It looks pretty generic. Right. Oh, there you go. Now you're extra special. So now you can find love. Those are so these are minor temporal band races. You get plus two to all saving throws. And once a day, you can double the amount of attacks you make in a round for two rounds. Oh, are you <laughs> kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, one D and D. <laughs> the power boost that we're getting right now. That's a lot of D20s well, for all. This goes to show you you need it. Thank you. 
Thank you for buffing our Gabby. Plus two. All. I have more presents. Oh shit. He walks over to the, the mule, opens the mule's mouth, reaches his hand into the mule's mouth, turns the light and questions his mouth at the same time, pulls an hourglass out. <laughs> he pulls out this wood, and the mule goes, like, <laughs> like, like it's kind of suffering for a moment. He goes, well, fine. He goes, so I told him, putting a pocket dimension in your mule's throat is a bad idea. Especially when your mule used to be a black dragon. Yes. At that same time, you hear a chicken. And he goes, you shut your filthy mouth. As he looks back at his carriage. And on the side of the carriage, you see a single wooden cage. And inside is the most undead chicken you have ever seen. The chicken like has almost no feathers left. And the chicken's not like alive and dying. The chicken is dead. How do you know the chicken's dead? Chicken missing half its head. It is an undead chicken. It is a living undead chicken. I may possess the only chicken who has ever committed a genocide. <laughs> what? Don't look at the chicken. It'll take your soul. Uncle. If he looks at the chicken. There is a dark evil it's emanating like, from the chicken. Straight up. It's a lich chicken. The chicken sits there. It looked like at one time it was like a, a white feathered chicken. Um, like it's in this state of like undead decay where it's not decaying anymore, but it's rotting. There's a big chunk of flesh missing out. Chicks are going. He looks at Sybil. Goes, no, you may not have any more souls. <laughs> so the, the hourglass is made out of like a dark wood. For the and thing. too pure for you to uh, touch. Otherwise, it just has a simple hourglass structure, like you would expect. Um, but in the way it's currently positioned, the sand's the bottom, of course. But the sand is wet. Here you go, Captain Giant Hands. Have the hourglass. Is it wet with mule sticks? Yes. <laughs> Make sure the sand stays above and don't know what it does. <laughs> Good job! Well, you're going to identify everything like that. Uh, it's an hourglass of fire and ice. So on one side, you have it on the fire side. All your fire spells get plus one to damage per die. And enemies get minus one to damage throw. If you turn it around, it becomes the ice hourglass. And it's the same thing for ice spells. But every time you flip it, there's a 1% chance, we'll double check, it explodes. Oh. <laughs> right, be think careful. He, I don't think he's ever going to flip it. Though. Don't use it to track time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, time is so relative. It's hilarious. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, what else? Mm. Ah. There you go. You look easy to kill. You look weak. Pathetic. Jesus. So it's a ring cut from, like, it looks like it was actually cut from a ruby. Like it's a rough cut ruby ring. Entirely made of ruby. Uh, the more the gnomes here, the more I dislike him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a ring of shield. So it frees your AC by one. Wow. He goes, I'm sorry. AC that, by one. Yep. That was a little rough. Sometimes the dark evil chicken gets to me. And I start to feel terrible. I think of all the things he has done. They'll only be contained. Never destroyed. Is that a Your eyes are set upon a destroyer of worlds. Dark madness. Will that little wooden cage really contain such a power? You chicken? see a cage, but what truly exists is a magical prison beyond your comprehension. <laughs> anyway, can I have one of his feathers? Do you wish to die? Oh no. Then no. <laughs> well then. Well, uh, right before you go, you get a bunch of arrows. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. He, he goes, oh! He goes, <clears throat> and these. And he just has this, like, his hands. He's, and his hands wrap around all these arrows. Goes, there you go. <laughs> Are they different kinds of Yes. Arrows? They're all different. Yeah. yeah. So we'll probably want to look at that when we get back. Yep. Uh, but there's all kinds of magic arrows, ice arrows, fire arrows, lightning oh, arrows, arrows of paralysis, arrows of detonation. And arrows none of these I can duplicate. No, no. Okay. But there are, <laughs> there's at least a couple of each. And last, because I have to go, because you all bore me, and you smell terrible. I have this. Wicker basket, puts it out. The chicken goes, I said shut up! <laughs> Here. Well, I like, he opens the box and he goes, it's lots of potions. 
I just threw Ryan Ray in there. I hope it's useful. <laughs> okay. Well, I've done my job. You are now all 5% more likely not to die. 